This is one of many parts of Exeter city walls and this part is like a patchwork quilt. In the middle here you've got Saxon, up there you've got some medieval sections, up the top there you've got some Norman bits, and down here you've got what's important to us today, original Roman walling. What is curious is the entire Roman town of Exeter and its, its place in the landscape in Great Britain was completely misunderstood until about two weeks ago. Having just read the extremely useful signboard back there, I now should be an expert at deciphering which bit of the wall is from which era. So if I come around this corner and find another bit, I should be able to tell you that that is maybe medieval. Anyway, let's go back 285 million years to when this hill we're stood on right now was a volcano. The Romans had been here for 140 years before they decided to quarry some of the volcanic trap, really hard wearing uh, masonry, let's call it, and they used that to build the first walls here at Exeter. At that time, they also dramatically expanded the city to 93 acres. Now, that rectangular shape they had then, from that point forward, pretty much every major civilization thereafter played their part here. And of course the Romans lived here for around about 400 years or so and that's exactly where today's story starts. You see every article, every map, every source you read, this place was a major civilization, a major outpost in fact, more importantly the most westerly. Life here started as a fort, a Roman legionary fortress for the second Augustan legion established AD 55. Over the next 100 years, it became a major civilization, a big settlement. And similarly to Silchester, bolstered by walls around 150 years into its life. Now, as you probably worked out, I'm trying to follow the walls today around Exeter and tell you this quite quirky story. However, danger keep out. A regular inspection of the city walls has highlighted some areas of concern and it is leaning quite that way. So we'll avoid this head back down and see what else we can find. Now, even the maps, the old maps from the regular sources, the Pewtinga table, my favourite map, that's got a little bit of Britain on the bottom and that does highlight Exeter. And it looks like if we would rotate the map, that is the most westerly point. In fact, it's got Gittersham to its north with a 15 mile marker between the two. Now the Roman Road Research Association have suggested that these two are the wrong way round on a map. That's understandable and perhaps they've done this for one of two reasons. Number one, Exeter and Limpney in Kent appear very close together when actually in real life they're not. And number two, well this map is east-west in its orientation. Your immediate eye view wants to suggest that indeed Exeter and Gittersham should be swapped. Let's take a brief closer look at the Putinga table. It's a transit map for want of a better word. It's absolutely bonkers. It's more of a show of strength, the entire Roman Empire. There's even cities on there that didn't coexist as the same time as one another. It is indeed a show of strength rather than a map that would be useful to you or I. So with that information in mind, let's hop back to the tiny bit that remains of the UK and assume for a second that the rest of Britannia was indeed elongated like the rest of the Putinga table. Remember, there's no scale here. This is really a transit map. Now only when we do this does something else come to light. Exeter might not be the most westerly point, not least as Gittersham Road carry on past Gittersham, and therefore in their eyes it is indeed the right way around, but also the entire Devon, Cornwall and Wales. Well, that could extend halfway up the map if we elongated it. Survived the hustle and bustle of town come into this courtyard and found some more wall. So the whole of that section between the top of the high street and down here is pretty much gone. But there is more here, although not a lot of that, I don't think, is Roman. And where we're gonna go now, I don't know. 
it's my belief that this map perpetrated this idea that Exeter was the most westernly point in the Roman Empire, even more so over the years, and from that point on, the next 700 years. A gorgeous bit of wall there, but again, nothing Roman that I can see. You see, from Exeter down to Land's End, that's a 120 mile straight line. It wouldn't have just managed itself, even in the early part of the Roman Empire. So to think that there was nothing beyond Exeter, was that a bit naive? Even the great Ivan Marguerite only had one route down here, Route 492A and B. Heading right down now to the uh, south eastern corner maybe and we've still got what I think there's a lot of medieval sections just there nothing more Roman to report so far tell a lie as I approach what would have been one of the major gates I'm not quite sure which I've got a funny feeling this here could be Roman I'm sure you'll correct me but this looks very much like the volcanic trap that we saw earlier in the start of the video. Could be wrong. I really dislike the naming of roads. Our Roman network does seem to end up in the media in many ways. Little attention is paid to any formal system. We're just left with names banded about, none bearing any resemblance to a name the Romans would use, and only a few bearing any resemblance to a formal Roman route. Now we know this from the itineraries. I've just crossed one of the many gates, or what would have been one of the gates, and for the first time and probably last time today I can actually walk on top of a bit of, a bit of the wall. Here we are. Um, about 10 yards in total. Now those routes with names can be misleading. They imply a route with joined up thinking. A route with a purpose, a mission and a goal in place. Take for example the Foss Way. The route that leads us from way up in Lincoln, down through Leicester, Sirencester, Bath, and then... Exeter? Not really a close-up shows the route more or less heads directly south down to Axminster and then on down to the coast. Now if Exeter was really the, the centre uh, of, of everything in this southwest part of the country, then surely the Foss Way would have headed right there. In fact, some scholars have suggested that the route texture was more of a branch from the south, from the real Foss Way, which headed to the north. Henry of Huntington, 12th century writer, talks of the Foss Way with almost an air of romance, suggesting that its route went from the beginning of Cornwall to the south end of Scotland. Now, despite this perhaps overzealous notion, while well, antiquarians have pondered on its end point in the south for a number of years. Have a look at the OS Roman Road map. We have on here the importance of the Roman mines in Cornwall and the resources that they brought. One road in and one road out just doesn't add up. If you have resources, you have a community, you have people, markets, towns, economies built around those resources and along those routes. in steps Exeter University with a study finalised in mid-2023 and indeed it did suggest that the Roman Empire extended much further west than Exeter. Not only did it do that but it also thrived there with many communities and many routes. The vast coverage of LiDAR now helped the team search for more routes. In fact this alone added 64 further miles to the database, but it didn't stop there because the LiDAR on its own gave you fragments, sections of Roman road. They added those routes, existing routes, permanent forts, towns and known Roman settlements, and then they plotted these primary and secondary nodes and predicted a further 10 miles. Now finally, the team used focal mobility networks, essentially corridors of movement through predicted routes, and now we have this. Now, if I read this right, largely these are predicted routes, 
possibly a lot are pre-existing trackways, military routes and such that was likely turned into regional communication routes and perhaps adopted thereafter on the main Circus Publicus. Above all though, this is two things to me. Number one, how little we already know about the Roman road network in this country. And number two, well, that now is the time for the Roman road network to shine. Now's the time to get your map out, get the LIDAR out, join the Roman Road Research Association, and well, let's start getting to grips with some of these parts that we don't know about Devon and Cornwall for one. A lot of work to be done, but a big part of that has been done by Exeter University. I've been Paul, I'll see you this time next week. <laughs>